One of the problems with using a dynamic, flexible language like Groovy is that it's, well, dynamic and flexible. Most developers yearn for consistency, with even an incorrectly placed new line enough to trigger a mild panic attack. Aside from just being annoying, inconsistencies make code harder to understand, and making changes can seem like a popularity contest as you decide which team members approach to follow. Welcome to another Gradle best practice tip, and this time I'd like to recommend you to use the Groovy language consistently within your Gradle build script. There are three main Groovy language features that lead to inconsistencies, so let's spend the next four minutes running through them one by one so you don't fall into a similar trap in your own Gradle project. Groovy adds extra string functionality on top of what Java already offers. If you use double quotes, the string gets interpolated, which means any expressions inside the string are evaluated. But if you use single quotes, that's just a plain Java string which doesn't have any interpolation. When it comes to writing Gradle build scripts, well, it's kind of string heavy. Plugin names, dependencies, repository URLs and more. And this is the kind of quote Mageddon you can get into if you mix up double and single quotes like there's no tomorrow. So should we be using single or double quotes here? Well, I like to take my steer from the Gradle docs, which consistently use single quotes for defining plain strings. If you need to use string interpolation, then you can still fall back to double quotes. This does mean that you end up with a build script with a mix of single and double quoted strings, but at least you have a consistent rule as to when to use each. Even something as simple as setting a task property can require navigating the consistency minefield. Take this basic task, for example. If we want to assign a task description, there are three options. We can call the description method and pass the value, use the equals operator to assign the value, or even call set description directly. Let's discount the third option as it's unnecessarily verbose. From the remaining two, you might choose the least verbose option, just calling description with the string. That's fine, but Gradle has other scenarios where this format doesn't work. For example, when registering a zip task, if we set the archive file name, we have to use the equal syntax. It's true that under the hood, there is something different happening in this case, since we're setting the value of a Gradle property object. It's a shame that the internal workings of Gradle sometimes leak out so that we need to be aware of them when using the Groovy DSL. The documentation suggests we use the first approach, just calling the description method and passing the value. This does make some sense since it's the least verbose option. Once again, pick an option and stick to it. Did you know that in Groovy you can leave out brackets when calling a method with one or more arguments? This feature is used heavily in the Gradle build script as a way to make the Groovy DSL more concise. For example, when using the plugin syntax to register plugins, that's just calling a method called plugins and passing it a closure. Since Gradle makes such heavy use of this optional brackets feature, it's pretty well a standard. Whenever we call a method in a build script then, we should avoid using brackets to follow that standard. Here's a fine example of this syntactic trap from a recent YouTube video from yours truly. Not possible! Much better to rewrite this without the brackets. That way the whole build script follows the same standard. Many thanks to this viewer for the correction. There are exceptions to this though. For example, in the Groovy DSL, when we're passing a closure to a method, any other parameters are normally wrapped up in brackets. Here's how that looks when registering a task. Even with such exceptions though, we can still try to leave out brackets where possible. Hopefully you can apply these ideas to your own build scripts to ensure consistency and a better experience for your team members. But you could sidestep many of these questions entirely and use the Kotlin DSL. Generally, Kotlin is less flexible than Groovy, in a good way, meaning there's only one way to do things, so it's easier to maintain consistency. Check out this video where you'll see a side-by-side -side comparison of creating a Gradle project in both languages.